Hello YouTube, um, my latest video is entitled I Wish for the Demise of Zimbabwe and um, the greatest inspiration for this video is simply um, the fact that I've just um, realized that a lot of Zimbabweans for some reason actually wish for the demise of Zimbabwe and I actually really noticed this in the last week and um, before I actually um, state the reasons why I believe this. I'm just going to share why I believe Zimbabweans would like Zimbabwe to continue as a so-called failed state. And the greatest reason there is, is um, asylum seekers. And I know this is a really touchy issue, but uh, at least 90% of asylum seekers in the UK of Zimbabwean origin um, are actually fake asylum seekers. They have no threat in Zimbabwe whatsoever. Even if they went back today, the government wouldn't really care at all. Uh, there are people who do face a true um, danger by visiting Zimbabwe once more. But um, with the creation of the GNU, yet again, even that threat has diminished. And therefore, um, you then realize that Britain is full of economic migrants and uh, at the same time you look at Australia, the United States um, and many other parts of Europe. Um, so these people, the only way they can stay in these foreign countries is if Zimbabwe continues to fail or at least if it seems like Zimbabwe is continuing to fail. And um, therefore this takes me on to my point. I was actually on a uh, on an online forum called uh, newszimbabwe.com and um, I have been a member uh, on there for the last five years I'd say and um, I just noticed a trend over the last week. Um, we do realize that Zimbabwe has been asking for debt relief, aid and loans from the international community for the last few months and um, more recently last week uh, Tendai Biti, the finance minister, actually flew to New York and um, he was basically there to um, encourage the international community to um, uh, regain respect or hope in Zimbabwe and therefore invest their money. And, um, you know, just before Biti went, I remember every Zimbabwean on that forum was just so skeptical. They said, Beach is going to go to New York and there, is, there isn't going to be any um, outcome to this. It's just going to be one of those meetings. And in actual fact, BT went to New York and met with the IMF and the World Bank uh, during their spring meetings. And uh, yesterday, I believe, uh, the IMF actually announced that they are setting up a, um, what they call a donor fund. And a donor fund is something, basically, is is basically like a fund where different countries will come to the IMF and say, we want to pledge a hundred million to Zimbabwe. We want to pledge ten million. So the IMF, which is probably the most respected financial institution in the world, has granted this to Zimbabwe. And you know, this really means that Zimbabwe is going to get a lot of money from the donor community. And yet again, this shows a big step by Zimbabwe. Um, in reconciliation with the international community. And at the same time, it shows that the IMF has more hope uh, that Zimbabwe is changing. But the funny thing about it is that I went on to newszimbabwe.com to announce this because um, I was one of the first people to see it uh, on the news. And the resounding um, reaction was that, oh, well, it wasn't really... Uh, IMF that gave Zimbabwe money. It, it's more like a, a donor community. You know, even though that fact is valid, uh, you still realize that whether it's IMF or donor countries that are giving money to Zimbabwe, the point is people are giving money to Zimbabwe. And that's the bottom line. Uh, people went on to say, oh, well, um, even if you look at the fund, we don't think the IMF is even going to get any money for Zimbabwe because uh, no one's going to want to put any money into the donor fund. And, okay, I'm looking at these people and I'm saying, three days ago you were saying that BT is going to New York and nothing's going to come out of the meeting. But here 
Zimbabwe is promised by the IMF and the World Bank that we will set up a fund for your country. And then now you're disputing how much Zimbabwe will get from the fund. And in a week's time, Zimbabweans will be disputing uh, the amount that IMF has given. Maybe they'll give a billion dollars and we'll probably dispute if it will actually ever come. And then when the money comes, we're just going to dispute if it's ever been used properly. So at the end of the day, it's this vicious cycle where Zimbabweans are um, continually trying to demonize their own country. And um, I then um, went up to realize that yet again, Sadak uh, had announced that they will be announcing their um, uh, pledges for Zimbabwe uh, during the IMF uh, spring meetings. And I remember it was Sunday uh, and one uh, person on the forum was like, oh, you know, uh, Sadek said they're going to announce uh, this package for Zimbabwe and they still haven't announced it. And therefore, this means that Zimbabwe didn't get any money from Sadek because Sadek is so poor and so toothless. Um, and then on Monday, Sadek actually comes up and they say, we're offering Zimbabwe $400 million and they can access this in the next um few weeks and I'm looking back and I'm realizing okay Zimbabweans just a few weeks ago were saying number one Sadak hasn't even pledged a penny and they never will because they're poor but here we are today and Sadak has pledged 400 million dollars and the question then is okay how do Zimbabweans react to this and the first reactions that I get uh, from people um, uh, from Zimbabwe is oh well it's only $400 million and Zimbabwe needs $2 billion um, to begin uh, their reconstruction. But the point is, two weeks ago, you were saying Zimbabwe will not get a penny from Sadak. And now that Zimbabwe has $400 million from Sadak, you're saying that it's not enough. Okay, in two months' time, Zimbabwe is going to have the full $2 billion from the West. And then you're going to say, oh, well, uh, the $2 billion is not going to be well spent. The $2 billion will be well spent. And then after that, you'll say, oh, well, uh, the $2 billion. But so in other words, what I'm trying to show is that there's this prevailing attitude uh, by Zimbabweans, which just shows this inferiority complex where everything that happens in Zimbabwe just has to be um, negative. And even if something positive comes out, it just has to be negative in some way. And this is where I return to the uh, asylum seeker uh, point of view. Uh, you know, there's this excessive thing with these asylum seekers where um, I, I respect the reason why they would claim false asylum in the United Kingdom. But my biggest problem is that instead of actually claiming false asylum and staying in, you know, in hiding somewhere quietly, these people brazenly will go on national TV, on BBC, they will go on forums on the internet, they will start blogs and they will do this and that and that just to demonize Zimbabwe more and more and make sure that Zimbabwe never uh, rises from the pit that it uh, it's in. And this is the greatest thing where you then realize that Zimbabweans, at least 60% of Zimbabweans do not want Zimbabwe to succeed. And it is really painful to realize this. And really the thing for me is that i i just really ask zimbabweans to really dig deep and re and actually see what is it that causes me to be so skeptical about zimbabwe what is is it that causes me to doubt zimbabwe should i doubt my doubts on zimbabwe and um yeah this is really my thought for today um and it's really serious because there are just so many people out there who gain from Zimbabwe's demise um, and we hope that changes soon. Thank you.